Happy day. I'm Dr. Paula Newsom. And I'm registered nurse Tracy Young. And together we're the educational faculty for Knockout Diabetes, where K stands for knowledge, N stands for nutrition, O stands for ocular health, and C stands for coaching. So right now I'm going to walk you through some deep breath exercises and this is very important to take some deep cleansing breaths throughout the day. You may be stressed out, you may have a challenging situation and you just need to calm down for a moment. And so this is something that you can do anytime throughout the day. Did you know that you can control your blood pressure mm. by breathing? Did you know that you can de-stress? by breathing, you know that you can actually um, not necessarily engage a lot of endorphins, mm -hmm. but you can even change your mood yes. by breathing. That breath is so very powerful. So this is, this is probably one of the most important exercises that we can share with you. Absolutely. So as we walk through these deep breaths, breathing exercises. I want to make sure that you're in a quiet and calm environment. Have a chair that has some back support, maybe arm support if you need it. Your feet should be placed flat on the floor with your legs uncrossed. And also if you want to relax back in your chair to have your back support it, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes throughout this segment to get yourself ready for the deep breathing exercises. You're going to hear me say inhale and exhale and kind of give you a guide as to how long to hold your breaths and exhale. But I do want you to keep in mind to still do what is within your comfort level, especially if this is your first time going through deep breathing exercises. I want to make sure that you're also breathing in through your nose and exhaling out through your mouth. And as we go through through the exercises, I'll make sure to guide you. So let's go ahead and get started. So close your eyes and here we go. Take a deep breath in, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, make sure you're inhaling through your nose, and exhale, blowing out that cleansing breath through your mouth, and inhale again, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale through your nose, and exhale through your mouth. Inhale. And exhale. Make sure you keep your feet flat on the floor. Inhale. And last one, exhale. Wonderful. How do you feel? Excellent. Right? Excellent. It's such a great exercise that you can practice at any time to kind of help yourself be calm and come down from any kind of stressful day or an event that you're having or just to kind of clear your mind of any negative thoughts you may be having. I actually even inhale and exhale even slower. Mm -hmm. I even just kind of relish mm -hmm. that breath. So I even do it at a slower count. Absolutely. Because my day is so hectic that I don't want that same speed. Mm -hmm. I want I to slow really, it down. yes. Absolutely. So you can do these exercises at your own pace. Um, it is important to uh, have your exhale be a little bit longer than your inhale to really blow out any of that negative energy or any of that old air that's kind of circling, uh, th circulating through your lungs. So thank you so much for watching these breathing exercises. We want you to be well, stay healthy, and stay the course as we knock, knock out, out diabetes. diabetes. Happy day and welcome to our program, Knock Out Diabetes. I am registered nurse Tracy Young and I'm here today to walk you through our weekly exercise regimen and introduce you to our Knock Out Diabetes community.
One of our program goals is to increase your activity to 150 minutes per week. That breaks down to about 30 minutes a day, and you can get that 30 minutes in each day by breaking that down in 10 minute increments after each meal. By exercising after each meal, that will give you really good effects on helping to lower that blood glucose throughout the day. I do want to give you a couple of reminders before we get started. Make sure that before you start any exercise program, you do consult with your health care provider. You want to make sure that you adjust your medication appropriately as exercising does bring down your blood glucose numbers. You may have any snacks that are needed to combat any hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. You want to make sure that you have a bottle of water or something next to you so that way you can stay hydrated. Some symptoms of hypoglycemia can include shakiness, feeling dizzy, blurred vision, or being excessively thirsty. So please be mindful and pay attention to your body and the, your body's cues as we go through the video. You can pause this at any time and make sure that you work at your own pace. Let's go ahead and get started. So first we're going to start with our warm up. It's very important to do a warm up. That way you can get your body ready for the exercise that we're getting ready to do. And warm up is going to include exercises that are very low intensity just to get your muscles and your body ready for movement. Our first warm up exercise is going to be the shoulder squeeze. We're going to squeeze our shoulders to the back and we're going to do 10 reps. Let's get started. Very good. Our next exercise will be exercising our neck. And we used to do the neck roll, but now we are going to take one ear and touch it to the shoulder and do that on the opposite side as well. And then take our chin and put it to our chest and then also move our head to the back. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Let's get started. Excellent. The next warm up exercise we'll do is arm circles. You're going to have your arms right out to the side of you. We're going to circle 25 seconds in one direction and then 25 seconds in the opposite direction. Let's get started. Forward. and backwards. And arms down. Great job. Make sure that you take time to see how are you feeling. Take a check-in whether or not you need to take a break, hydrate with some water, or continue going. You can pause this video at any time.
Our next warm-up exercise is going to be high knees. And for this exercise, you will hold your hands out in front of you and touch your knee to, eat to your hand for each repetition. If you are unsteady or you need a little bit of support, you can use a wall next to you or you can use a chair. For this exercise, we will do 20 repetitions. Let's go ahead and get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. Great job. Our next exercise is going to be side stretches. And for this exercise, we are going to stretch to one side. We're gonna do that five times and hold each repetition for five seconds and then do it again on the opposite side. So we're gonna start going this direction first. Let's get started. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Opposite side. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Very good. Now that we're finished with our warm up, we're going to move into our exercise pieces. Our first exercise is going to be the good old sit up. So we're going to sit on the floor with your feet flat on the floor. And if you need anything to hold your feet down, or if you're working out with someone, you can enlist their help to kind of hold your feet down. And we're going to go ahead and do three sets of 10 sit-ups for this exercise. You're going to place your hands behind the bottom of your behind the bottom of your head and when you sit up, you're going to push your chin straight up to the ceiling. That way you get really good form. So let's go ahead and get started. All right.
Our next exercise is going to be the bicycle. For this, we have the similar position as the sit-up, but we're gonna lay flat on our back with our feet at a 90 degree angle as we move our legs as if we are riding a bicycle. We're gonna do two sets of 30 seconds for these. Let's go ahead and get started. Our next exercise is the plank exercise. This exercise is really going to help with your core muscle and core muscle control. For this exercise, you are going to be on your stomach. You are going to have your elbows nice in front of you, and you're also going to have your feet on your toes behind you. We're going to push up in the plank position and hold this position for 15 seconds, and we will do this two times. Let's go ahead and get started. Our next exercise is going to be the bridge or what we call hip extension. And for this exercise, you will be seated on the ground with your feet flat on the floor. Our backs are also going to be flat on the floor and we're going to lift our hips up to the ceiling. For this exercise, we're going to do three sets and hold them for 10 seconds each. Let's get started. Place your hands flat on the floor and place your feet about hip width apart. And when you're ready, we'll go ahead and lift straight up. So for our next exercise, we are going to do tricep extension. So you'll see that we do have weights here, but I want you to know that this exercise can be done without weights. You can use anything that you have at your home, such as a coffee mug or a can or anything that you have to just give a little bit of weight. And if you don't want to use weight at all, or if you have any kind of restrictions to this, you don't have to use weights, but we are going to use them for the purpose of this video. So with this, what we're going to do is hold this weight in our hands. We're going to place our arms back behind our heads with our elbows pointing straight up to the air, and then we are going to extend. We're going to do this 10 times, and we're going to do it for three sets. So let's get started.
Our next exercise is going to be the bicep curl. Again, we do have our weights here, but the bicep curl can be done or modified with a can or a coffee mug or anything that you have at your home to give you a little bit of extra weight. This exercise can also be done without any weight at all by simply just moving your arms to get that mobility in your joints. Now, we will be demonstrating single bicep curls, but you can also do a double bicep curl where you hold your can or your weight in your hand and you simply move up and down like this. So there are many ways to modify this exercise but still get the benefit. We are going to do 10 curls on each arm. We're going to start with our right arm first and then move to our left arm. So let's go ahead and get started. Awesome, switch arms. Very good. Our next exercise is going to be the jumping jack. We're gonna do three sets of 10. Let's go ahead and get started. Ready? Now it's time to cool down. And this is a very important part of any exercise as it helps your body recover from the exercises that we did previously or in any workout that you participate in. So now we're gonna start with the abdominal stretch. For this stretch, you are going to have your hands flat on the floor, your shoulder, your elbows about shoulder width apart, and we're going to push up to stretch our abdominal cavity. And what we're gonna do is stretch for about 10 seconds and do this three times. Let's go ahead and get started, okay? Our next cool down stretch is going to be the sit and reach. So for this, you're gonna sit on the floor with your feet straight out in front of you and try to pull your feet back to your knees so they're kind of at a 90 degree angle or a little bit more so you feel that stretch right in the back of your legs. We're then going to reach to touch our toes and we're gonna hold this stretch for 10 seconds and we're gonna do it three times. Ready? and relax, and again. And relax, and again. And relax. For our final cool down activity, we're going to breathe in for a count of eight and breathe out for a count of eight. For this activity, you will sit on the floor and if you can, cross your legs or just in any kind of comfortable position that suits you. We are going to breathe in and we're gonna raise our arms above our head and then we will count to eight and then we will breathe out and bring our arms down for another count of eight and we'll repeat this three times. Let's go ahead and get started. Go. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. 
and breathe out. Awesome job completing this workout with Knockout Diabetes. As always, we want you to be well, stay healthy, and stay the course as we knock, knock out, out diabetes. diabetes. Happy day, everyone. My name is Dr. Paula Newsom. And I am registered nurse Tracy Young. And we are the faculty for a program that is going to change your life. It's called Knockout Diabetes. Diabetes. And NOC stands for Knowledge, Nutrition, Ocular Health, and Coaching. Today, we are going to talk about the numbers, and it's all about the numbers. That's right. Yep. And our metabolism. Do you know what your numbers are? Because that's so critically important. It is. Um, there's some numbers that you really need to know. Numbers like your BMI, Absolutely. like your waist circumference, and different risk factors that are related to obesity. Absolutely. So nobody likes to carry a tape measure around with Correct. them. Correct. But you really need that, at least initially, to know exactly where you're starting. Because right. if you don't have a good starting point, you don't know where you're going to end up. That's right. I always like to tell the analogy that if you're going to get in your car and drive to California, you absolutely need a road map. Yes, you do. And so that's why you've got to have that tape measure. And knowing your numbers. Right. So. Without further ado, let's talk about BMI, Nurse okay. Tracy. So BMI is going to be your ratio between your height and your weight. And the BMI is going to be different for men and women, and that's why it's very important to know what your height and what your weight is and to keep track of it. It also assesses the amount of fat that a person is carrying. And just to understand that you will not have the same BMI as LeBron James. Hey, LeBron, if you're watching. <laughs> That's right. And you may not have the same uh, height or weight or BMI as someone who's elderly as That's well. Right. Because as you have birthdays, those things change. Yes. And also for people who train and who are athletes and professional athletes in particular, their BMIs are just insane. That's right. Yeah. Because your like, ratios for muscles, all of that is taken into account. Right. So there's some norms that I want you guys to just pay attention to. You're underweight if your BMI is 18.5 or below. Mm -hmm. Normal is 18.5 to 24.9. And keep that 24.9 in there because I am now under 24.9. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's right. And overweight is 25 to 29.9. That's where we st I started. Uh, obese is 30 to 39.9. And extreme obesity is greater than 40. That's right. Now, um, it's just... Um, incumbent upon us to make sure that we know what that number is. That's right. And there are a lot of uh, calculations that you can do online yes. to come up with that. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, what is your ideal weight? Uh, that's something that will vary from person to person. Uh, but if you lose five to 10% of your total body weight, that can really make a difference in your risk factors for diabetes. Um, it helps your body take up insulin better. It can lower your blood pressure and have a lot of good health benefits. Absolutely. So we're only talking about five to 10% of your total body weight. Let's just take an example. Let's say you weigh 100. If you weigh 100, we're talking about 5 to 10 pounds. Let's say you weigh 200. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking 10 to 20, 20 pounds. Most people think when they get on this ideal weight uh, journey, most people think that that is a very ominous task. And they come out with some really big number like 60 pounds right, right. or 100 pounds. But that, I think, is a real big problem because that number is too big it and is. it's not attainable. And so it's better, I always <laughs> like to talk to patients about, tackling an elephant yes and how do you tackle an one elephant? bite at a time one bite at a time <laughs> yes. and so the smaller the increment the better for you and the better results you'll get so as you move from let's say 200 to 190 or 180 mm -hmm. then you say okay now I want to lose another five, five to ten percent right five to ten percent and then you go down another 
five mm -hmm. to ten percent. So it's really, really important for you to take your ideal weight and start with your ideal weight and then move it down gradually. That's right. Don't make it too big. None of us can lose 60 pounds in 30 days. It, and should not. <laughs> And should Bad not. Idea. That's right. It wouldn't be healthy. <laughs> and it won't last. That's right. That's right. So just think about what it is that you really want to lose. And just know also that the best weight loss and the most sustainable weight loss is a half pound to two pounds a week. That's it. So it's only a half pound to two pounds a week. So you want to give yourself enough time to get mm -hmm. there. And you also want to make sure that it's a small, bite-sized chunk. That's right. So you can be successful and reach it. So let's talk a little bit about food groups sure. and how how do we affect change in our diet in order to lose that weight. Um, I believe that most people are probably familiar with our food groups. Um, we do have um, a plate here where we kind of talk about our fats, our carbohydrates, our proteins, and how do we have those on our plates and stick to that for each meal. So in nutrition, um, the food groups are called the food groups, but they're also called macronutrients. And what that means is that they are large, large um, particles that go into our body. Correct. There are also micronutrients, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But the big ones, again, are your carbohydrates, your proteins, and we'll talk about what they do, and your fats. Mm -hmm. and just for illustration purposes, I did want to share with you what one pound of fat looks like. So I just want you to be aware that it's not a cute sight. Mm -mm. So we want to make sure that we kind of manage that. That's okay? right. That's right. We don't need any extra of that hanging no, around. No, we really don't. <laughs> so now, metabolism. Okay, so metabolism is the process of which your body is going to produce energy uh, to keep your body running for sustenance. And so if you eat around three to five times a day, that's an easy way to keep your body going, to keep that metabolism running. Um, I, you know, sometimes run into people say, well, I only eat, you know, once a day, or, you know, I don't want to overeat. And so there's a little bit of a myth to that, because if you're only eating once a day, you're not really giving your body that time and your metabolism to continue running throughout the day. So your yeah, metabolism actually slows down. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do for weight reduction is to eat That's multiple right. times a day. But you do want to watch your portion size. That's right. And then you also want to be cognizant of the time that you're eating. Mm -hmm. Because if you're getting ready to lie down and it's 7 o'clock or 8 right. o'clock, <laughs> right. you don't want to eat <laughs> and then go to bed. You need to have at least two to three hours before it's time to go to bed. So right. if your bedtime is eight o'clock, you should stop eating definitely around that six o'clock mark um, at the latest. Absolutely. Also, just understand weight management is just that. It is calories in versus calories, calories out. out. I don't care. I have a lot of patients who tell me that they only eat one time a day yeah. and I'm looking at them and I'm going. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't no believe way. that. And it's calories out versus calories expended. Mm -hmm. So there's a little cheat trick that you can do that will also lower your blood sugar, okay. but it will also help you in terms of even sleeping better. Mm -hmm. And that is to do 10 minutes of exercise yes. after you eat. So say for instance, and we'll talk about exercise more, right. but say for instance, if you really want to rev up your metabolism, after you eat, if you took a 10 minute walk, mm -hmm. and you can do it inside your home. You don't have to go outside. That's right. You can just walk around the inside of That's your house. That's right. Um, but you can do that for 10 minutes a day, three times a day, and you've got your 30 minutes of exercise and that's for the what you day. need. Absolutely. So that's a, but it also lowers your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. But it also improves your metabolism. Yes, it does. It also causes your body to release more energy. Absolutely. So it's a win, win, win and a win. win. That's right. <laughs> 
So in order to lose about one pound of body fat, what you need to do is reduce your calories by about 500. And easy ways to do that is to watch your portion size. And a big part of that is our carbohydrates. So instead of having two servings of rice or just even one serving, put that down to a half a cup. Uh, we have different things we can do with our sandwiches. I know that's something really easy to make, but you can have an open face sandwich, having one slice of bread versus two, or even using a lettuce wrap. Right. What about even air frying instead of uh, frying French fries in grease? That's awesome. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, the air fryers that have come out, I mean, that's just something that's pretty much a hit. Um, you can still get that same crispiness without using all of the grease and the oils. And they never burn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Keep it delicious. I, lo I love uh -huh. air frying. That's I right. I air fry so much. I even found out that you can reheat with an air fryer. Nice. Yeah, yeah. you can. I need to invest. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we focus on carbohydrates so much? Do you know why we do? Absolutely. So okay. we focus on those carbs because that is exactly what our body is breaking down into sugar or glucose. And so that is what's really going to influence your blood glucose or your blood sugar numbers. So the Takeaway is that anytime you drink alcohol, mm -hmm. juice, mm -hmm. milk, anything that's not water, mm -hmm. or anytime you eat anything, especially all those yummy foods mm -hmm. like breads, all those comfort Brownies. foods, grits, mm -hmm. any kind of dessert for sure, um, any carbohydrate, pasta, almost anything that tastes really, really yummy. That's right. Has a whole bunch of carbohydrates. Yes, it does. And so the real key is to switch the processed foods mm -hmm. and to switch the high carbohydrate foods with foods that are either lower in carbs That's right. or foods that burn slower. Correct. Okay. And one thing I like to tell people is, you know, carbs, you can't just erase them from your diet, right? You and so there's just like, oh, I can't eat carbs anymore that's it you know like you said it is choosing the type of carb and so moving away from those simple sugars to your more complex exactly. so getting your non starchy carbs like your vegetables you know that's going to be a carbohydrate but that's kind of what we consider a good carb Absolutely. you know you want to have plenty of those on your plate so your body will burn those a lot slower it knows exactly how to process them when it's more natural and it doesn't stick to all those places you don't want it <laughs> It sticks, but it goes through. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. So there are tons of uh, carbohydrates that we currently consume. Mm -hmm. We consume starches like prote uh, potatoes and cereal and crackers mm -hmm. and then peas and beans and corn. And right. then there's fruit and the fruit juice. And, you know, oftentimes, Tracy, people don't remember and think about the fact that they're drinking That's calories right. as well. Well. That's right. And if you just cut out sodas, because sodas can be as much as uh, 150 to 200 calories a uh, serving. That's right. For one can. That's right. So if you just cut out two sodas a day, that's your 500. That's your 500. That's right. <laughs> it's just simple stuff. And then you've got non-starchy vegetables like tomatoes and mm -hmm. cauliflower. And tomatoes actually add a lot of sweetness to food. They do. So if you want to have a good balance, you know, a good explosion in your mouth, yeah. you try some adding some tomatoes, you know, with ever, whatever dish it is that you're cooking. Absolutely. Um, and then don't forget about your dairy foods like your milks and your yogurt. Mm -hmm. and then your sugary drinks, including alcohol, and then your sweets. Absolutely. Okay. So the ideal amount of carbs that we really should consume at each meal is like 45 mm -hmm. carbohydrates. Right. Which, and 15 grams for a, a snack. snack. Yeah, 15 grams for a snack. So I tell you what let's do. Let's do some, a little bit of uh, carb counting. Okay. 
So let's just take a look at some of the choices. All right, so for instance, one carb choice could be a whole wheat piece of bread, it could be a half a cup of oatmeal, a half third, fourth cup of dry cereal, or a third cup of rice. So that would give you your one uh, carb choice, and that would be considered like a grain. And then for your vegetables, you've got a half cup of peas, a half cup of carrots, um, asparagus, which can be really nice. And then for your fruits, we could do bananas, blueberries, you know, these are those fruits that are also going to be a carbohydrate, but because it's more natural, it's gonna break down better. Uh, so you can have four ounces of a banana, which is like a small one, one of those small bananas, or about half of a large one. A third, fourth cup of blueberries. You can also have uh, two tablespoons of raisins. And all of those sound like really good choices. That's they something are. that I could definitely incorporate into my diet. And for your milk choices, you can have plain yogurt, about six to eight ounces of that, or about eight ounces of whole milk or skim milk, just depending on uh, what your goals are, because you have to remember that the whole milk is gonna have more fat in it, whereas the skim milk is not. So uh, you wanna think about that. The lactose or the sugar content in your milk is gonna be the same, whether it's the whole milk or the skim it's just the fat content that you're looking at there. And then for protein, uh, you've got roast beef, ground beef, tilapia or some salmon, um, eggs and chicken. So that's all, those are all really good options to put in there. And there's no carbs to count for that because that's your protein. I'm a real stickler for wild caught. So mm -hmm. you said tilapia and I wanted to cringe. Yeah. But um, it's because I think that in terms of healthy, you want more natural. More natural. And I would say the same thing for the other carbs that you mentioned. Um, when possible, if you're going to put it in your mouth directly, and I know it costs just a little bit more, mm -hmm. but if you could try to do organic when it comes to things that are going directly into your mouth. Yes. If it has a covering, if it has like a like an, an avocado. avocado, yeah, exactly. It's not nearly as important for it to be organic right. versus non-organic. But if you're eating an apple, right, you want to. I would. It's, to do it's because organic. of the thickness in the skin. So the reason why you would choose something organic being that it's not getting a lot of those chemicals into it. If it's something like an avocado, it's got a very thick skin. It's it's more likely that you, you are not going to have the effects of those, those and, fertilizers. And what we're talking about are not just the fertilizers, we're also talking about pesticides. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the way that food is grown now. Um, They've had lots of studies, but one in particular, where they looked at a content of spinach, and they found that it took one 2021 cup of spinach is equal to 52 cups of spinach in 1950. Big difference. And it's the way we grow. Yes. Um, so I'm a big advocate of farmer's markets, mm -hmm. buying local, um, more, not as much processed stuff, not mm -hmm. as much farm-raised foods, Correct. and way more uh, locally grown farm-to-table. Agreed. Agreed. All right. And I want people to start thinking about that because I think too often we think that we can't afford it, but at what price is your health? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. And the difference is uh, when you're buying these things and you're, you're eating your fruits and vegetables fresh, really the price difference, the markup, it's, it's very nominal. Right, and that's why I mentioned uh, farmer's markets and I don't have any financial stake in it. <laughs> right. Market. Not a bad idea. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I don't have any stake in any farmer's markets. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is that the produce is just healthier. Right. And if you taste that versus food You can tell the else, difference. You really can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the more we buy it, I believe that the prices will come down. Absolutely. 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 So um, one other thing that people often forget to do Especially when they're in the grocery store. And I know I aggravate people when I'm in the grocery store. Because before I buy anything that's in a bag or a box, I always look at that food label. You have to look at the food label. Uh, it's not just about the propaganda that's on the front. You know, organic, healthy, heart 
choice, you know, things like that. You need to turn it around and look at that label um, because those are that's what's going to be regulated. So we had a class uh, maybe last year, maybe the year before. I don't even remember it. And I had gone to um, a local grocery store and I'd purchased several different brands of popcorn. Yes in the bag and it was amazing the one that everybody thought was the healthier choice had the least fat the least sodium the least calories was actually the most it, it was it was so funny <laughs> it was a very good experiment yeah it was it yeah. was it was and at the time i don't think that either one of us we really didn't really know, know. Right, we right, didn't right. and ever since then i have been a stickler for reading food labels yes. and i think that's one of the things that one of the more important takeaways that the people who attended that class in person came away with it was a big deal yeah it was yeah. a huge deal you've got to read the food labels you know they say if uh, you want to keep something from the American public mm -hmm. put it in a book because <laughs> we don't read it. <laughs> and so this is so 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 important. Very important. And I challenge anyone at home to just start in your own cabinets. Right. Start in your own refrigerator, your pantry, and take a look at some of those food labels and see what's on there and take a look at the ingredients. Um, it may seem like a huge task when you're going through the grocery store just to stop and turn things around but after a while you find the brands that you enjoy and also give you the nutritional benefit right. and have more value and right. so it becomes a lot easier to shop now so when i go to the grocery store i kind of know what products i'm looking for but it took that initial all right, I'm gonna be here for an hour. <laughs> Let me turn this around. With my mask yeah, on. With, uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> right. Um, you know, figuring out what are those items that's got a good serving size, that has less sodium, that yeah. has less carbs. Um, very important, and it makes a big difference. And usually, when you purchase foods that are either reduced in sugar or whatever they're reduced in, they make up for it in another area. Right. So if it is, for instance, I don't eat any meat with feet and I need to yeah. trademark that <laughs> yes, by the way <laughs> but I eat no meat with feet mm -hmm. and so I was thinking I was buying all these soy products mm -hmm. and I was buying all these meat substitutes only to find out that my blood pressure was going up and I'm like okay I exercise mm -hmm. I eat right what's going on until we were in class one day and one of the people in the class one of the attendees said oh, you're taking in 440 grams of sodium, sodium on this one product and it shocked me. Yes. I have probably had two of those burgers in the two years since then. Done. Because yes. I was like, ah. I don't want that much sodium yeah. in anything. Absolutely. So just understand that when you're getting foods that show a reduction in either uh, salt, sugar, or whatever, right. they're making up for it on the other end. Right. Fats or something. That's right. You have yeah. to look at it all. Yeah. So, you know what I found that really works? We do, in my household, we do a lot of meal planning. And the meal planning and meal prepping mm -hmm. is just important because, again, how do you get to California? You have a plan. Road map. Yep. So, what we found is that you're more apt to track your calories, your mm -hmm. carbohydrates, your fats, and your sodium. You eat better. Yes. It doesn't cost as much because you're not going out Eating as out. much. Eating out, yeah. And it's better for your overall health. Yes. So, and the one thing that um, I've found personally is you can't do this 100% of the time. Right. It, it's just totally unrealistic. So all we're asking you to do is perhaps 70 to 75%, and I may even say 80%. If you can just eat healthy, eat right, count your carbs, watch your calories, lower your sodium intake, and we'll talk about why that is, lower your fat intake, lower your caloric intake, 75% of the time, you will get to that 500 calories per week that you need to reduce so you can lose weight. Absolutely. And get to that ideal weight. Absolutely. Um, and also with meal planning, it's 
it makes it convenient for you not to just say, well, I'm going to stop at McDonald's or I'm going to go through a drive through things like that. Because I know for those that have busy families or, right. you know, well, you busy occupations, yeah. right, it, it's yeah. very easy to just say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm behind on this right. or, you know, my day's not going as planned. I don't know what's for dinner. You know, we have all these things to do. But if you go home and things are already planned or cooked, it's very easy to just reheat something, right. pop it out, your salad's already done. Re-air fry it. Re-air fry it, because <laughs> you can warm it up, right? Um, it's very easy to do those things. And if you're making your food delicious, I mean, my my little one, she will eat the food that I cook, right. you know. And so once you're, you know, cooking at home and they're not used to that Chick-fil-A or McDonald's or all of those, right. it's very easy to just go home, have your meal, and then go on with the rest of your day. And so it might take one full day to plan all those meals, get your food cooked, but then you're set for at least three days of the week. So are there some tools out there that are available that people can use to to do this? Absolutely. There are lots of apps. If you visit the app store that is compatible with your phone or even online, uh, there are lots of apps that will tell you, okay, these are my favorite foods. You can plug in what it is that you want to eat and it will give you the calories. It'll tell you how much to cook, uh, what will work. Uh, I do use a lot of YouTube and Pinterest. Those are my favorites um, because people have thousands of tools on there where they're like, this is what I make, this is how you do it, go buy your Tupperware, um, having a very nice Tupperware set so you can kind of get everything prepped and put it into your fridge and it makes it so easy. So what about portion size? Because that's uh, pretty easy. And I just wanted to mention that, you know, the federal government thinks that obesity and mm -hmm. our um, is such a drain on our economy. Yeah. I think that that's a big push um, in terms of our medical system, in terms of our health care system, mm -hmm. which it's not health, by the way, it's more, we need to be concentrating on wellness. Right, prevention. Yeah, wellness. Right. So, but there are some tools that the federal government has made. Absolutely. That, um, and subsidized um, to help people plan so do you want to share that? Yeah. This is a resource. It's called My Native Plate. This is made by the FDA, and it's some. It's a resource that has been given out to go through the fruits, the vegetables, proteins, and how to be able to make a healthy meal. What I really like about this tool is on the back it has the differences for a youth plate, what you could have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so this is very beneficial because our calorie needs are different. If you have a mixed household with adults and children, you know, this is very inclusive. Okay. Another tool that we have here, and this is from the American Diabetes Association. This is an easy way to kind of show you what your portion of protein would look like by using a fist. So for instance, everyone's fist is not gonna be the same. So if you have a male versus a female, um, my fist, you can place it up here to see, is your fist size about this size? That would be one cup. And if it's a little bit larger, it'd be one and a half. So that's an easy way to use your own body to be able to count what portion size you need. Also, I think it's really, really important is to track and plan out what it is that you want to do, especially as it comes to the carb counting. If you <clears throat> look at uh, this, it's got all the days of the week, and then it also has your breakfast, your snack, your lunch, and your dinner. And then you can track how many total calories and or carbs you are ingesting on a daily basis. There are also some symbols down at the bottom that will help you stay on track and help you with your counting and your measuring. Absolutely. And one of the tools that we use in our program, and we will talk about this a little bit further, is going to be our daily food and activity journal. So this is a tool made by us, and it's in a 
simple form where you can carry this with you to also help track not only your food, but your activity as well, because the exercise and changing your food go hand in hand. Absolutely. They boost your metabolism, the exercise does. We also have um, some power foods that are by Dr. Stephen Pratt, and there are 14 superfoods that will change your life. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to contact us, and our contact information will be um, at the end of each of these segments. Absolutely. So how are you doing and how physically active are you throughout the day? What do you consider um, when you're thinking about doing your physical activities? Do you have some challenges getting started? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And with the food log, uh, what food groups have you consumed and recorded on your log? Are you eating mostly carbs? Are you eating a balanced meal for vegetables, fruits? You know, want to really take a look at what you're recording and making sure that you're having a balanced meal. And have we talked about the fact that if it's in a bag or a box, you typically don't want to consume as much of that? Yes, we okay. need to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to. Um, we really want to stay away from as much bagged and or boxed mm -hmm. because the more bagged and boxed, the more processed it is. Yes, So absolutely. And then that gets back to our farm to table. Uh-huh, yes. yes, and especially with the canned goods as well. We're absolutely. talking about sodium. If it's coming in a can, it's gonna have more sodium because it needs to be used as a preservative. And so something to look out for. And we keep talking about sodium. Why is that important? It's important as it relates to high blood pressure mm -hmm. And that's something that we will be discussing yes. at length. All right. Um, and also, do you have any food allergies or restrictions? Uh, that's something, you know, that we have to be aware of because there are maybe some foods that don't work with your body and some that do. And so knowing exactly what you're consuming and whether or not that's something that you can continue with. And I think probably the most important thing that we can share um, is make sure you read your food labels. Yes. It is so vitally important important to your health and your well-being. Absolutely. Our 10 for 10 pledge. This is something we take a lot of pride in. Uh, it is, you know, kind of the hallmark and of, of, our, of our program, and it's our 10 for 10 pledge. And these are the 10 things that we really encourage, you know, all of our participants mm -hmm. to make sure that they do. And so uh, we're going to monitor self. our vision daily with the tool that you'll be given as a participant in the program. We want you to monitor your food intake daily. Mm -hmm. We also want you to commit to monitoring your blood glucose daily. And should we add, and we will add, but we'll talk about it again more at different times of the day. Every other patient that I see tells me what their blood sugar is before they eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, but what is it now? Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Like, oh, I, oh, was I supposed to mm -hmm. check that? Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, keeping up with your program materials and where you are mm -hmm. in the program, in the NOC program. Um, right in your journal when you're feeling out of control or in control. We want to know what makes you feel good, but we also want to know what makes you feel not so right. good. Um, and then being open to change behavior. Mm -hmm. Would you believe that there is a whole science around people's willingness to change? Yes. That is so important. Um, so we want to make sure that you know what your, where you are on that meter. Are you at the, I am not going to change, I don't care. You know, it could be a tornado, a hurricane, <laughs> yeah. and a tsunami all at the same time. I am not changing. Or are you one of those that you're the first one in line mm -hmm. to take a change? Right. So. Absolutely. Um, and then also check your feet daily. So if you uh, have diabetes, pre-diabetes, you want to make sure that you are checking your feet every day for any sores. And we will talk more about the vascular effects that diabetes has, but we want to make sure that we check our feet so we're not having any sores or um, anything that we don't know what's going on. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do at least 150 minutes of activity. And so we were talking about the 10 minutes, three times a day. That times would be, five days. Right, <laughs> time five days. And so that would be able to get your 30 minutes in 
during that day and make it easy so it's not a big chunk of your day, but 150 minutes of activity uh, or exercise per week is, is our goal. Right. And to attend at least 80% of our classes to get this information. Um, each and every session that we have is very beneficial. We have our handouts to give. And then also to make sure that you fully participate in the activities. If you're not going to be serious or commit, then no point in uh, going any further. We are going to make a change. Right. You are going to make a change. And we're going to do it together. Right. We know this works. So we just want to share with you some best practices so you too can get to your goals. So until the next time, we want you to be well, stay healthy, and stay the course as we knock, knock out, out diabetes. diabetes.